our volunteers have started to gather the produce that's been donated at the Fresh Farm Market in DuPont Circle, and this is just the beginning. Wait till you see it's gonna grow and grow. Okay, you could come on through, man. Outside Columbia Heights Village Apartments in Northwest Washington. Hi, Miss Ann. How, How you, you doing today? Residents like Aisha Wilson ponder their options on food distribution day. Oh, give me some bread. Yes, ma'am. Aisha Wilson has endured a lot these past couple years. I'm in between jobs myself right now, so actually this fresh food today is really coming in handy. I, I really appreciate it. This is every week we get these goodies. For 90-year-old Virginia Marrero, what she takes home will sustain her for days. Can I have this too? To understand how all this fresh food got here, we sat down with the person primarily responsible, Kate Urbank with Food Rescue US. We've rescued seven million meals, and that accounts to about 8.5 million pounds of food. This nonprofit's innovative approach to tackling hunger involves volunteers rescuing and distributing perfectly good food to those in need before it's thrown away by grocery stores, restaurants, and corporate cafeterias. There are statistics that say between 30 and 40% of food is wasted. And when we have a food insecurity problem in the United States, that's absurd. According to ReFed, the United States wasted 35% of food produced in 2019. That's 160 billion pounds of unsold and uneaten food cast aside, costing farmers, grocers, and consumers more than $200 billion. Right now, I'm separating through our meats. Food Rescue U.S. partners with supermarkets like Wegmans, <laughs> where Angelica Buckman works. It feels great. I mean, nobody likes to throw away food. We give with love, and we hope it's accepted with love. Moments after she packs up food, otherwise destined for a landfill. There's a lot here. Volunteer Glenn Romero swoops in, loads up, and heads off to Columbia Heights Village. I was shocked at how much food I put in the back of my truck. Only 20 minutes later, we hear from a grateful Miss Moreto. And I didn't have nothing in my fridge, so I'm blessed. It's a match game, really. This entire process from pickup to delivery is coordinated through a proprietary app, ensuring short drive times so nothing spoils. And some of Urbank's top food providers are Washington institutions. All right, let me put this inside. Thank you, Chef. Like the Sodexo Cafeteria at the National Geographic Society. I don't like food waste because we know in Washington, D.C. what the world is going through. It's easy to see why a global outfit like National Geographic supports this program when one of their missions is protecting the wonders of the world. That's what we're all about, inspiring people to you know, care about their planet, learn, educate, and make changes. Aramark executive chef Steve Hoy at Capital One Arena also goes out of his way to provide. This might be their only meal of the day. For, for me, that's something important to know that I'm giving back to the community. The car is completely filled with boxes. Volunteer Janet Fershine then takes the short trip to Central Union Mission where she's greeted by Chef Rick Snyder. How's it looking? It looks beautiful. This is good stuff. It's very hard being on the street. It's dehumanizing being a homeless person. So anything we can do here to give a person a sense of love and dignity and respect, we're going to do it. And oftentimes that begins with a meal. Something tastes better when it's warm. We try to do that. 15 per, per tray. You got pastries. They really like the pastries. Glenn Webb resides at Central Union Mission. He also works in the kitchen. It's very encouraging to me to see the amount of donations that come in every day because it tells me that there are still people in this world who have a heart. I'm glad we have people, things and places that people care that want to help someone. For resident Willie Wiggins, the path of compassion traveled by so many from farm to fork boils down to one ingredient. Well, it's good to know that we have a mission that wants to show you that people do love you, that you can come and get a nice good food, breakfast, lunch, and dinner from love. Wiggins reminds us that there are few human qualities as transcendent as empathy. Which brings us to the DuPont Circle Farmers Market. So we're really looking at food systems from like start to finish. From like Danielle Antone works for Fresh Farm 
a nonprofit that manages dozens of farmers markets across the region. So we're able to close that loop on recovery and increase access to communities in need. We have a lot of uh, fresh lettuce, some salad greens, kale bunches. We got 23, 41 all together. I don't want it to go to waste. There's people in need. It just makes sense to do it. It's heavy. <laughs> At the end of each weekly market, mm. food rescue volunteers hustle to see who has leftovers gathering boxes and bags stuffed with garden fresh produce. So someone will be eating all the vitamins. No longer destined for the trash. Oh, it's the most beautiful food in the whole city that they're donating to people in need. It's amazing. Then a handful of groups that work directly with food insecure families pull up and pack up all these healthy choices. It's the difference between food in a can and fresh food that is delicious. The amount of food gathered on this day allows Kate Urbank to reflect not only on this bounty, but the wisdom of a man who understands the power of kindness. One of the folks we interviewed earlier this week talked about food being love. And I think about that and I look at this and it, it, it really is love. I'm Jay Korf for 7 News.